see the first shot for about half an hour. Tiger, 13 foot, as you know. You know that when you're in the water, Chief, you tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail. Well, we didn't know. But our bomb mission had been so secret. No distress signal had been sent. <laughs> they didn't even listen to overdue for a week. Very first light, Chief. Sharks come cruising. So we formed ourselves into tight groups. It was kind of like old squares in the battle. Like you see in the calendar, like the Battle of Waterloo. And the idea was, shark comes to the nearest man, that money's that pounding and hollering and screaming. Sometimes the shark go away. Sometimes he wouldn't go away. Sometimes that shark looks right in you, right into your eyes. You know the thing about a shark, you see? Like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white, and then, oh, and you hear that terrible high pitched screaming. The ocean turns red, and in spite of all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in and rip you to pieces. You know, by the end of that first dawn, Lost a hundred men. I don't know how many sharks. Maybe a thousand. I don't know how many men. The average six an hour. On Thursday morning, Chief, I bumped into a friend of mine, Herbie Robinson from Cleveland. Baseball player. Who's his name? I thought he was asleep. I reached over to wake him up. Bobbed up and down in the water. It was like a kind of top. I bended. Noon the fifth day, Mr. McGlory, Lockheed Ventura, so she swung low and he saw his team, the young pilot, not younger than Mr. Hooper anyway, he saw us come in low and three hours later, a big fat PBY comes down to start to pick us up, you know, that was the time I was most frightened, waiting for my turn, I'll never put on a life jacket again. So, 1,100 men went in the water, 360 men come out, the sharks took the rest, June the 29th, Anyway, we delivered the bomb.